Hey guys, so as you know, we are in between major country episodes and that means it's time for a filler week. Let's do another administrative division video. And this time we're gonna take it back to Europe. For the past few weeks, I've been spending time getting footage for the USA episode and traveling to Native American reservations, but I was not alone. I flew over one of the few people that I know that understands and has a passion for geography as much as I do, and he is Dutch. So therefore we figured why not do an administrative division video on his home country, come on in, say hi, to Mr. Alka. Yeah, Mr. Alka. Oh, Hi. He's, uh, <laughs> he's definitely Dutch. <laughs> and we'll have to adjust the camera, guys. Get ready. Uh, yeah, so I'm Alka and I run the page Atlas Sova, which you can find on Instagram and on YouTube. And we do map stuff, mostly map stuff. So I figure if you like geography, go check out my page. And they make really good stuff. All right, uh, all right, Alka, uh, I don't know. You want to talk about the Netherlands or something? It's... Let's begin. Blijf kijken en dan gaan we Nederlands verkennen. So a few things you need to understand. The Netherlands actually is a kingdom. That means we have a king and a queen. That's great. And there are three different types of administrative divisions. Provinces, municipalities, and constituent countries. And uh, let's start off with the biggest one, the provinces, shall we? Let's go. So the first one is Drenthe, and the capital is Assen. Assen. <laughs> now this province has the lowest population density and has the lowest GDP per capita, so it kind of like flies under the radar for most of the provinces. But it really shouldn't because it does have some very ancient sites like the Hunnebed burial mounds. Some are over 5,000 years old. They also have this national park. It's a heathland and it's one of the largest in Western Europe. Apparently heath, it's like the heath flowers or something. Beautiful. What's Assen known for? Oh, they have a racetrack. That's cool. Awesome racetrack. <laughs> it's an awesome Assen racetrack. Next one, Flevoland. Capital, Lelystad. Uh, it's like the Netherlands' biggest experiment. So this is an interesting one, not only because it's the newest province and the smallest in the land area, but it's the only province that is completely artificially made by reclaimed lands via polders. Yeah, we already explained what a polder is in the Netherlands episode, but in case if you missed it, it's basically like a, like a place that was made by draining out all the water so that the land underneath becomes new land. So Something like that, right? Yeah. They started doing this in the 50s and part of it were considered part of Overijssel, another province, in the beginning. But then they decided to make it officially a brand new province in 1986. You built an entire new province. <laughs> yep. This meant that a bunch of new cities popped up and a lot of people actually moved from Amsterdam to Almere because Amsterdam was too expensive. Right, yeah. And this was the time where people were actually able to buy a car so they could live further away from where they worked. So people moved to Almere. Now, even though they don't have a lot of old sites, everything's kind of new there, they still have a lot of cool things to check out. Like the Batavia Yard, a museum, and a there's a lot of water sports such as sailing, windsurfing, kiteboarding, all that sort of stuff is very popular here. Uh, Flevoland, it has a lot of flavor. <laughs> flavor, uh -huh. okay, let's move on. Friesland, capital, Leeuwarden. It's the place with its own language, yes. Frisian. They're very proud of it, and it's actually the closest language to English. And fun fact, my name, Auke, is Frisian, even though I'm not from there. It's very difficult for me to understand it. I understand maybe like 40% of it when they talk. You probably wouldn't understand it. Not at all. There's actually a video of a guy speaking old English to a Frisian guy trying to buy a cow. It went viral. And the, the Frisian guy actually like understood him. Yep. It was weird. From a Dutch perspective, what are the people of Frizi Friesland like? Um, I think they're known to be very blunt and brash. They don't really care for an excessive lifestyle. And many people will say maybe that they're the most beautiful people in the country. I mean, Doutsen Cruz is from there and pretty much everyone there looks like her. Ah, uh, got it. Gelderland, capital, Arnhem. It's like the wild card province. You never know what you're gonna get here. Uh, it's the largest province by area and there are so many interesting random things here. Veluwe, uh, it's one of the largest nature preserves in the Netherlands and you can find, you can actually find like, there's a wildlife there. <laughs> <laughs> it's also home to the largest waterfall in the Netherlands, the Lunen Waterfall, which is a stunning 15 meters high, which oh. is 50 feet. Whoa. Nijmegen, I studied there, claims to be the oldest city dating back to Roman times, about 2000 years old. Oh yeah, many of the uh, castles and uh, palaces are supposedly like haunted and abandoned. So yeah, there's a little bit of everything. It's a wild card. What the hell, Gelderland? <laughs> so much going, I don't know, I can't even. Groningen, capital Groningen. It's the northernmost and isolated but fun province. So like Friesland, they have the mud flats of the Wadden Sea, which means you can actually walk to some of the islands uh, on a good low tide date. But don't do this on yourself, it's super dangerous. You should always do this with a guide. Groningen is known for one of its most famous uh, universities. It's one of the oldest in the country, started in 1614. So there's kind of like a fun student vibe to this whole place, you know? Uh, 
what else? Uh, they invented corf ball. <laughs> yeah. There is a little bit of a controversial thing to this uh, area. Explain a little bit, Elke. Yeah, so Groningen does have the Groningen gas fields, which which is good for the economy, but not very good for the people living there because it causes earthquakes. Because um, people don't like it when their house starts crumbling down. Right. Limburg. Limburg? Limburg. Limburg. Capital Maastricht. So Limburg is the southernmost province and it is the only province that borders both Germany and Belgium. So they have a fun accent because it almost sounds like every sentence they say ends in a question, but it's all fun and games. Uh, however, Limburg is known for ha uh, having like rolly, hilly landscapes because, you know, it's in the south, you know, everything else is kind of flatter up in the north. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We like to say that they have mountains, um, even though the highest point of European Netherlands is located there and it's only 322 meters or 1056 feet. So both Nijmegen in Gelderland and Maastricht in Limburg claim to be the oldest city in the country. Both started as a Roman military outpost about 2000 years ago. Who knows? Who knows? But let them battle it out. And now we move on to North Brabant. The capital is called Sechtogenbos or for short Den Bosch. Bosch. <laughs> Dutch language, man. Okay, so Alka, this is your province, isn't it? Yes. Yes, okay, so tell us about it. It's confusing because the province of North Brabant is actually in the south of the Netherlands. That's because in Belgium there is another province called Brabant. So we're north of that. Of the Belgian one. Yes. Yes. So you guys probably know Vincent van Gogh, <laughs> Vincent van Gogh. Yeah, uh, yeah, he actually is from North Brabant. And fun fact, I went to the same high school as Vincent van Gogh. Besides all the fun activities though, North Brabant is also known for having the smartest region in the country, supposedly. Uh, explain a little bit. Well, this is the area where the tech giant Philips originated from, and it's now home to a bunch of tech startups and big companies like ASML that produce machines that make the highest quality microchips in the world. It's interesting because it has the N and exclaves of Baarle Nassau and Baarle Hertog. If you look at the map, you'll see a bunch of different parts of Belgium inside the Netherlands, inside Belgium, inside the Netherlands. It's a mess, but it's interesting. I explained about it in the Belgium episode, guys. Uh, check it out. It's a weird city. North Holland. Oh, uh, yeah. Capital is actually Harlem. This is like the flashy moneymaker province. You've all heard of Amsterdam. You know, that's this province. The canals, the coffee shops, crooked buildings that are technically sinking. And that's very iconic of Amsterdam and North Holland. Yes, but there is more to North Holland than just Amsterdam. Head up a little north and you have places like Volendam, Marken Island, which are super Dutch iconic sites. And you can also drive on the longest connection towards Friesland. It's the Offslide Dijk. And yeah, the Hollands is basically where everybody got the, the misnomer where they thought this whole country was named Holland. It, it's not, it's just a province within the Netherlands. Yeah. Which brings us to the next province, South Holland. Capital, Den Haag, in English, The Hague. This is the province that ate their prime minister. I'll explain that. Uh, but first, <laughs> it's the most populous province and has cities like Rotterdam and The Hague. Rotterdam is like the hardworking port city uh, with the busiest harbor in all of Europe. The Hague, on the other hand, is the capital that isn't the capital because it houses the government, the parliament, and everything political. Also, The Hague has the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, which settles debates between countries. So, you know, yeah, 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 don't go to war. War is bad. Also, if you receive a postcard from the Netherlands, it likely features either Kinderdijk with the beautiful windmills or the tulip fields near Lisse. And that's all South Holland. And also, South Holland is where they ate their prime <laughs> minister? What? Yeah. Can you explain? Okay, that was back in 1670. Too. But yeah, still, they did that. They were angry. They killed him and opened him up, ate him. South Holland. It's fun. Okay, South Holland. <laughs> now let's talk about Overijssel. Capital, Zwolle. 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 Yep. Overijssel is home to many historic towns and villages, including Giethoorn, a picturesque village that is often called the, the Dutch Venice. The city of Zwolle, located in Overijssel, is a charming Hanseatic city that is known for its historic architecture. The Hanseatic League. Yes. Yeah, 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 look in your history, yeah. Alka, something crazy happened here, by the way. Yes, in May of 2000, um, a firework factory actually exploded, and the bad thing was that firework factory was located in the middle of a neighborhood. Um, it's super crazy, it's like a national trauma. Um, it was terrible. Oh man, okay, well, let's move on to Utrecht. <laughs> <laughs> so Utrecht, capital, and the same name, Utrecht. It's kind of like Amsterdam if there weren't as many tourists. Yeah. Like, they have the canals, all the stuff, the bicycle lanes, it's really... The city is very vibrant due to its large student population, and all these students, of course, ride their bicycles. Um, so the city actually has the largest bicycle parking in the world. I've been there. It's, it's like a big, massive, built parking structure. Yep. Just for bicycles. So in general, Utrecht is just known to have very beautiful parks and gardens, botanical gardens. Oh, and the famous artist of Mondrian was 
from here. And the only Dutch Pope was from Utrecht. And finally, the last province, Zeeland, capital Middleburg. This is the original Zeeland. Hey, Kiwis, your country, you know, in New Zealand, it was named, it was named after this province. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, heads up. I used to go here a lot, actually, when I was a kid. The, the province has beautiful beaches and it has the best seafood in the country. Would you call that fish, the herring that you eat with onions? Yeah, herring. Is there, what, what's it called in Dutch? Harding. You just got Harding. Yeah. It's the province with the lowest population in the country and has some of the most very religious towns. The Netherlands has something we call the Bible Belt. It's like a strip of towns that spans from Overijssel all the way to Zeeland. It's very prevalent here as the people sometimes wear traditional outfits and are known to have very strict Sunday rest or Sunday Sabbath. In general, this province is uh, beautiful, flat and beachy. And uh, if you want to go for a swim and have some mussels and oysters, this is the place to go. So that was all the provinces, but the, there's a little extra to this thing, right? There's yes. a country called the Netherlands. This is where we leave the European continent and move across the world to the Caribbean. The Netherlands has six overseas islands that fall within their kingdom located in the Caribbean. These are often called the Dutch Caribbean. Right, so the six islands, three are constituent countries. That means they're a country within the kingdom of the Netherlands. Those are Sint Maarten, Aruba and Curaçao. And then you have the three other islands which are special municipalities. So they fall under the country of the Netherlands that falls under the kingdom of the Netherlands. Those are Bonaire, Saba, and St. Estasius. Uh, it's kind of like the UK with Scotland, Wales, you know, being constituent countries. Same deal, Netherlands. Uh, let's start with the special municipalities first. So these islands technically are kind of like under the status of a town or a city rather than a province. Right, yes. It's, yeah, so they're that small, but yeah. they're islands. So let's start with the first one, Bonaire, capital, Kralendijk. It's the least populated of the ABC islands with only about 20,000 people. And it's not a constituent country, it's a special municipality. Even though it's located next to Aruba and Curaçao, you would think it is, but it's not. It's in the down, but St. Martin is a country. Ugh, complicated. Famous for its uh, Bonarian style architecture, which features brightly colored stuccoed buildings with red tile roofs. It's, yeah. They're home to the Bekelmeer Flamingo Sanctuary. Also lots of salt pans and salt pyramids, which export salt all over the world. During celebrations, they'll serve bolo preto cake, a traditional black cake made with raisins, currants, and rum. Rum cake is so good. I love The whole Caribbean makes rum cake. I love it. Next up, St. Eustatius, capital Oranjestad. St. Eustatius, also known as Stasia in the Caribbean, is one of the smallest islands and is located right next to St. Kitts and Nevis. In fact, on a clear sunny day, you can even see it from the distance from the west side of St. Kitts. Basically, it's an island that was formed by two volcanoes that mesh together. And the entire island only has like 3,200 people and their only airport is actually named after Franklin Roosevelt, so yeah. Uh, overall, it's a cool little island with good diving spots and a shipwreck. Next up is Saba, another special municipality. The capital is the bottom. That's an interesting name for a capital. They're nicknamed the unspoiled queen of the Caribbean. This is the smallest special municipality in the Kingdom of the Netherlands. It only has about 2,000 people and funny enough, although it is small, it actually has the highest point in the entire Kingdom of the Netherlands, Mount Scenery, which is actually an active volcano at 887 meters tall. So your tallest point is on a small island. Yes. It also has the world's shortest airport runway, the Juancho E. Irauz Queen Airport, which is only about 400 meters wide and it drops right into a steep cliff. <laughs> yeah, it was literally the only place they could build an airport because most of the island is just built on steep ridges and cliffs. Yeah, small, fall. volcanic, you could fall off a cliff, fall. tallest point, Saba, man. Wild. Next up, the constituent countries. First up, Aruba. Also, the capital there is called Oranjestad. So, since it's a constituent country, they use their own currency, uh, the Arubian florin as a currency. However, the US dollar are, is widely accepted. Historically, it was inhabited by the Arawak peoples, and today you can even see petroglyphs in some of the caves. Basically, the island was once part of Spain, but they didn't really care for the island because it was dry and not capable of growing plantations. So, they kind of ditched it. Uh, the Dutch came and found gold. There was gold. Like, that was gold. Yeah, they missed out. Then there was a time when they became big on oil refining, mostly due to the proximity to Venezuela and their oil fields. It's, yeah. St. Martin. Now, this is a weird one because it's like half an island that's split with France on the north, St. Martin, and they're both called St. Martin. Uh, the Dutch side is on the south, and it's the only part where you guys border France. It's true. Legislatively, yeah. And it's a constituent country. It's like, it's not even a whole island, but it's a whole country. Oh, and yes, this is the island where you can stand really close to the runway of an airport, uh, and you see airplanes flying just 100 meters about 100 feet above you. Uh, and as a constituent country, they use the Netherlands Antillian Guilder and the US dollar as a currency. So most people here actually speak English, not much Dutch, but they still use it and they teach it in schools. Uh, there was a story about a criminal too. <laughs> oh, right. The, the famous kidnapper of Heineken, the Mr. Heineken, the beer brand. He was kidnapped and the kidnapper was finally caught in France, but 
because of all sorts of regulations and rules, they couldn't extradite him through Belgium. So they had to fly him over to St. Maritus so they could actually transport him to the Netherlands. Wow, extradition laws are crazy. And finally, Curaçao, capital Willemstad. Um, it's the most populous of the ABC islands at around 150,000 people. The official currency in Curaçao is the Netherlands Antillian Gilder, but also here the US dollar is widely accepted. Just like Aruba, they have a history of gold, oil refining, and the finance sector and tourism. They play huge roles in their economy. They are famous for their colorful houses in Willemstad, built in Punda architecture, Dutch style gables and shutters. The island, just like Aruba and Bonaire, is kind of more dry and arid. And there's lots of cacti, stuff like that. It's a cool landscape. There's a liquor, you've probably heard of it, blue curacao and green curacao. It's actually made from their own lahara fruit. They take the peels and yeah, they make that liquor. So there you go. That is everything that falls administratively in the Netherlands. It is your home country. Let's imagine this was a Netherlands Geography Now episode. You know how I say like, in conclusion? Uh -huh. If this was your chance to say, in conclusion, how would you say in conclusion about the Netherlands? You're putting me on the spot. Here. Yes, I am. <laughs> pressure, pressure. Whole country watching. Uh, it's a small, flat country in Europe, but has some weird anomalies in the Caribbean. Super interesting stuff. But yeah, I guess we're cool people. Um, we're very direct, very blunt. But in general, I think we're friendly. I think you are too. Um, and uh, clearly, when I step down, there's also another thing about you guys. <laughs> so cheers. Sol. Hope you guys have a good one. Stay cool. Stay tuned.